Hello and good morning. Welcome back to another vlog and welcome to my COVID layer. It is day four of me having COVID, the fourth day of me being in isolation, away from Steven, away from the kids, and physically I'm feeling like 70% recovered but i'm still staying away from for one more day just to make sure i'm in the clear um and not getting steven and the kids sick because they are all still doing just fine so if we can keep them from getting this that is fantastic so yeah i am going on four days of COVID isolation. I feel pretty helpless. Like I feel guilty not being able to help with the kids, but Steven has been doing an amazing job as always. So I know the kids are taken care of and I've been able to just focus on resting. And hopefully tomorrow I will be able to rejoin them um, as long as I test tonight and it's negative and then I test again tomorrow morning and it's negative, then I'm pretty much good to go. I think I'm gonna wear um, a mask for another day or two just to be extra safe. But yeah, Steven and the kids are, are they're fine. They have no symptoms, testing negative. Um, this actually happened, but reversed a while back. Steven got sick, tested positive for COVID. He isolated from us right away and we didn't end up getting sick, which was great. So we're hoping that that's the way that things go again this time. That's what it's seeming like so far. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the first two days I was really sick, like just, you know, laying in bed, trying to ride it out, sleeping a lot. Yesterday I felt way better. Like I feel like I really turned the corner. So I tried to like get out of bed a little bit. I did some walking on my walking pad that I have up here in the office. Showered, did some stretching, just like kind of tried to start coming out of this a little bit. I, I've i experienced a lot where after I get sick, I immediately like fall into a depression just from like all of that time in bed and like not really moving my body. I think also just kind of like the stress of like rejoining life when you have taken a step away it can feel like a lot for me. So I'm trying to like balance giving myself grace and compassion and allowing myself to rest because I'm sick, but also not staying in bed longer than I need to so that I don't kind of settle into that feeling of just like not moving and not getting out of bed. So today I am gonna try to have like a little bit of a routine. I've got some goals for the day. Very, uh, very minor goals, but like I'd like to shower before 5 p.m. <laughs> because then I have to go to sleep on wet hair and I don't want to do that. Um, I want to get 7,000 steps in two walking sessions on the walking pad. I'd like to stretch and I want to make sure that I drink at least three refills of my Stanley cup because hydration is very important. So yeah, um, this is, I'm just going to warn you up front. This is not going to be the most exciting vlog. It's going to be a little boring, but you know what? I figured I can't really be that productive up here. Anyways, I might as well make a vlog. That's one thing I can do while I'm stuck up here by myself. And you know what? I think it, it helps motivate me a little bit to get out of bed and do things other than just mindlessly scrolling on TikTok. So <laughs> I haven't showered yet. I did just clean up my room a little bit. I'm locked up here in the office. This is my table of provisions. I've got some snacks, medicine, a mask in case I need to leave the room. And then all of this beautiful art that Grace has been making me, all the cards and drawings, and then some flowers that they picked for me in the yard. Very, very sweet. I also have lots of different like mints and things to try and mitigate the absolutely terrible taste in my mouth from Paxlovid. It's the medicine that my doctor prescribed me that's supposed to make COVID less severe. And I feel like it's definitely worth it because COVID has been pretty mild for me. I'm also up to date on my vaccine, so hasn't been too bad. I feel like I've gotten over it very quickly, but uh, the, the metallic taste that it gives you in your mouth, ugh, can't stand it. So been chewing on lots of mints. I tried Jolly Ranchers for a little while. Helps a little bit, but does not get rid of it. So I've only got one more day, two more days two more days of this medicine. So hopefully that will be gone soon. Um, I'm gonna go take a shower and change into some clean clothes. Still pajamas, but clean pajamas. And that is a win. <laughs> All right, here we go. Shower in three, two, one. Yay. <laughs> That feels so much better. It's nice to feel good enough now to be like up and moving around. But I also hate how quickly I feel tired and out of breath. Like in my brain, I just want the switch to flip and be like, yep, I feel great, not sick anymore, no problems. But then after standing in the shower for like five minutes, I'm like, 
I need to lay down. <laughs> this does not bode well for my 5k training. I'm trying not to think about that, but it is just a, a fact of life, a fact of getting sick. I had one run left in week seven before I got sick and week eight is supposed to start tomorrow. So what I think I'm probably just going to do is pick up running again early next week whenever I'm feeling up to it and repeat week seven. So do all three of those runs before I move on to week eight. But I hope I don't lose too much of that stamina that I had built up in taking some time off because I feel like I was really, really like hitting my stride with running for lack of a better term. <laughs> all right, I'm clean. I'm dressed into some new pajamas, still sweats and a t-shirt, but it's a clean sweats and a t-shirt. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna lay back in bed for a little bit and probably just read, rest up a little bit. And then uh, I think I'm gonna walk on my walking pad. So I got the Kindle. I'm reading before the coffee gets cold. It's been, it's been okay. I had higher hopes for this book. I think the premise is amazing and it is a series and I've heard that the later books are better. This is the first one and it's like really more of a short story. It's like a novella but it's just been a little slow but I think I'll I'll probably finish it today and I'm kind of excited to start something new because there's not much else for me to do up here. <laughs> All right I am walking and watching Dancing with the Stars. I've got some mints. I've got a protein shake. And my Kindle with my new book downloading. I'm gonna read Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. And then this right here. This is my little remote. If I wanna go faster, slower, stop it, I can do that all from here. All right, I walked for a good while. Um, got to a little over half my step goal for the day. So I'm thinking I'll walk some more later, but um, I got off because Grace wanted to FaceTime. She was, she was missing me and it's really hard and sad to be away from the kids. And you know, Alice, like I, I'm sad to be away from her, but she's so young, like I don't feel like she is missing me. Whereas Grace is like actively missing me and wishing she could come up here. And so it's uh, it's not been easy. I, it's been a lot of FaceTimes and making plans for all the things that we're gonna do together when I'm better. We made a list while we were FaceTiming of everything that we're gonna do tomorrow, as long as I'm better. I'm definitely looking forward to that as long as I keep feeling good and, and have my two negative tests. I'll be very happy to return to life with the kids. Um, I think I'm gonna do some stretching. That was another one of my goals for today. And I'm not doing my regular train well workouts while I'm sick, but my trainer uploaded some like stretching circuits that I can do. So I'm gonna run through that on the train well app. So we are gonna do full body stretch too. Run through these and hopefully feel a little more in touch with my body. I got to page 63. I think I'm on like the fifth chapter of Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. And it's good so far. I love Kristen Hanna books. I think I read like five of her books this year and there was really only one that I didn't like. Distant Shores. It was a, a, just a bit of a flop for me. But I just read her book, The Women, which I loved. The Nightingale is amazing. Winter Garden is another great Kristen Hanna book. And so far, I feel like this one is gonna be really good too. It's definitely like womanhood friendship vibes. Um, it's set in the 70s too. She does a lot of historical fiction, but I don't feel like this book is really historical fiction. It's just like set in that time period, but it's not at least yet like really diving into the historical events that were going on at that time. There's just kind of like brief mentions, but I'm enjoying it so far. I feel like I'll probably jump back into it again this evening. Steven just brought me some spicy noodles he made me. So I'm just gonna eat take a little break from reading. And then I posted on Instagram and asked you guys for some questions that I can answer in today's vlog. So uh, a little bit later, we can jump back in with that. All right, let's answer some questions. Rank these, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, 
first three months postpartum. Okay, definitely the worst is the first trimester for me. Like all of the, the fear of things going wrong that early, plus like not having the reassurance of feeling pregnant, feeling the baby move. Also like, you know, trying to keep it secret to a level. It's just a lot to deal with, not to mention like the physical symptoms of nausea and bloating and just all of the crap that comes with the first trimester. That is by far the worst for me. I'm gonna follow that with third trimester because then like yes you're so physically uncomfortable at the end at least I was there can be like some fear and anxiety about going into birth what that what's that gonna look like I with my first pregnancy had prodromal labor for the last couple weeks which was basically where my body felt like I was going into labor and I was having real contractions they just weren't progressing me at all so definitely physically super uncomfortable but you're like close to meeting your baby and there's a lot of specialness in those final weeks after that i would say probably second trimester second trimester was great for me like i feel like that's when you hit the pregnancy glow that people talk about you're like showing but you're not really uncomfortable yet doing lots of exciting things getting ready for the baby um but still that doesn't beat out the first three months postpartum because even though it's so tough and draining and you know there's all the lack of sleep and figuring out breastfeeding like i have my baby and that makes it by far the best even though it's probably the hardest favorite activity you like to do with each of your girls right now i love that question um with grace right now i really love doing arts and crafts she's gotten really into that lately and so that's been a fun thing for us to do together and she loves to draw and be creative and that's just it's always a fun little thing for us to do and with alice I think right now my favorite thing is just like sitting her up because she's not quite sitting unassisted yet but she can sit up and like hold my hands and I'll do this like either laying on my stomach facing her oh hold on Steven's calling me hello I would put her down for another nap right now and then I would make sure that she's up by like 5 or 5 30. Had to take a, a quick phone call from Steven he needed some nap insight for Alice um but my favorite thing to do with her is just like sitting her up and we just look right in each other's eyes and I'll just like sing to her and make her laugh and I just feel like we connect so much in those moments and it's also really fun to do that with Grace around because Alice just absolutely lights up when she sees Grace. Grace gets the biggest giggles out of her which she's very proud of and it's just fun to like feel really connected with her in that way. Just get all the smiles and giggles. Okay, we've got a Disney question. Imagine you are president of Imagineering. What changes to the parks are you making? Okay, number one. This may not be anyone's top priority except me, but the People Mover needs to come back to Disneyland. I love the People Mover. If the People Mover has no fans, I'm dead. I will ride hard for the freaking People Mover. I think it's just, it's just a classic. Like I, I always look forward to doing it when we go to Disney World because we don't have it here in California. And it, it, we still have the track for the People Mover in Tomorrowland, but it's a sad empty track with no People Mover. Bring back the People Mover. Again, Again, there are like a million more important improvements that could be made but if it was up to me that would be my first action <laughs> do you prefer physical books or kindle i love my kindle i got this for christmas this year and i've probably done like 70 percent of my reading on it it's just amazing i feel like it i read so much faster for some reason on it it's so comfortable to hold if i'm like reading laying in bed or super easy to take it on the go and throw it in my purse if i'm waiting like at a doctor's appointment or traveling it's just the best huge kindle fan i fought it hard because i was like no no i i'm, I'm good with my audiobooks and like occasionally checking out uh, a regular book at the library but the kindle is uh it has changed me for sure highly recommend i always get asked what kindle i have i just have the regular classic good old kindle it's not the paper white it's not the like bigger one it's just the regular size the regular one and it is good enough for me i have zero complaints I also love being able to like adjust the brightness when I'm reading, make the text bigger or smaller. And I use the Libby app for most books that I read, which is a free app that connects to my library card. And so I get access to 
all of the San Diego County Library's digital catalog. And there's long waits for things a lot, but I just like periodically go through and join the waitlist for a bunch of books I'm interested in reading. And as they pop up, like Firefly Lane, I had been on the waitlist for this one for a couple months. Then when it pops up, that's what I read next. And I still enjoy audiobooks. I have an Audible subscription. And so sometimes for certain books, I'll like only listen to the audiobook version. I do that a lot for like nonfiction books. I'll treat it more like a podcast. And then sometimes I'll like read part of a book on the Kindle, but then also, you know, pick up with the audiobook when I'm at the gym or like doing dishes. And I just want to like passively listen. Why haven't you gone to New York City in years? Great question. I'm asking myself that too. I love New York City. It is my favorite place probably in the entire world. I love like the theater there, obviously. Broadway is like amazing as a theater person. I love the ambiance of the city. I love just everything about it. I, I've i always really enjoyed going to New York, um, but just since having kids, it hasn't been in the cards for me. It's a big trip. I feel like to make it worth it for that long of a flight, I'd need to go for like probably three or four days. And that's a long time to be away from the kids. So I don't know, I wanna get back soon for sure. I don't have any trips planned, but I definitely wanna get back because I just love it and I miss it. Question for the main channel videos. When you guys do clothing try-ons, who pays for them? Do they each pay individually or do you cover all the costs? Just curious. I get this question all the time. Anything that we do for the Schulte Collective is paid for by the business. So whether it's for like a clothing haul or like all the smoothies we bought for the Erewhon video, anything for the Schulte Collective videos, we have separate business accounts and it is all paid for, but everyone does get to keep anything from a video they were in if they want it. So like with the Pop Flex review, me, Jess, and Jaden, we all kept the things that we liked the most and then anything that we didn't want, the rest of the team who was working on that video behind the camera got first dibs and then anything else that isn't wanted, we either return or donate. So yeah, all of the video related costs, the business covers and the cast of that video gets to keep anything they want as a perk. Quarantine activities. I've been doing a lot of just laying around, scrolling TikTok, tried not to do as much of that today, but a lot of reading. I watched a documentary and then watched some chill comfort shows. I watched a couple episodes of Modern Family. Um, I colored a little bit. I did some, some drawings for Grace back to her since she sent all this lovely art up here for me to look at. Um, walking on the walking pad has been huge for just like getting some movement in my body without leaving this space. And uh, I did some crossword puzzles. I found a crossword puzzle app on my phone. Actually, it started because I was like, you know what I haven't played in forever? Wordle. I went and played the daily Wordle and then I was like, Th that was fun. Got my brain going a little bit. We'll do some word games. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Does this mean you're officially finished nursing? Yes. And I I actually didn't really think about this until I saw this question. I stopped nursing a couple weeks ago and uh, I talked about it in the last vlog. I'll link that below if you want more of the story and kind of how my breastfeeding journey went this time. But um, if I hadn't stopped, I feel like this probably would have pushed me to stop because I was already feeling the way I was feeling about it. Having those thoughts of wanting to be done and then being separated from Alice like this would have meant so much pumping to keep up with it. And then also, especially the first two days when I was feeling so crappy, I would not have been wanting to, you know, stay on a pumping schedule and figure all of that out. So I'm grateful that I stopped before this because I think that would have probably made this just more complicated and difficult and maybe even a little more emotional about stopping because it wouldn't have felt completely like my choice. But yes, I'm totally done breastfeeding, which was also nice for being sick because I got to take DayQuil. And like with the Paxlovid, I didn't have to think about like, okay, is this safe for nursing? Do I need to pump and dump while I'm taking this? Go over all the, those things with my doctor, yada, yada. I just got to take the medicine to uh, help me get better. How are you doing on your reading goal for the year? Um, I am absolutely crushing it on this front. <laughs> I have read more books this year than I probably have any single year in my life, except for when I was maybe like 14. Like then I would just stay up all night reading. But my goal for 2024 was to read 24 books and I have read 51 books. So crushing it, doing good. And honestly, a big chunk of that 
is the Kindle. It just makes it so easy. And honestly, I think it has been so good for... Oh, sorry. My family chat is fighting about football. <laughs> Mute that. <laughs> I think the Kindle has been so good for my mental health because now the time that I would usually reach for my phone and just scroll mindlessly when I got a little bit of a break or just like finally getting in bed at the end of the day, that's what I would instinctively do. And now instead, I read most of the time when I have those opportunities and I think it's just so much better for me. I've noticed a big correlation in the amount of time that I spend kind of mindlessly on social media with how much reading I've been doing this year. It's replaced so much of it. Do you think you will continue running after your 5k? You're rocking it. Thank you. I uh, I felt really good doing my 5k training. Um, I've enjoyed it on a completely different level than I expected and as of right now I definitely think it's something I'm gonna continue after the 5k. I'm like shocked at how much I actually love to run and how good it feels. I never thought that would be me, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm gonna roll with it. How do you deal with difficult family members relating to politics? I have had to tread the line between managing relationships with people in my family who I disagree with without shutting down that side of myself and not being true to what I believe and finding ways to, you know, maintain and continue those relationships without compromising on my own beliefs. I am a, a very liberal person and I feel really confident about what I believe believe in and I'm not afraid to stand up for those things even when it comes to family members who I know are going to disagree with me. And there are boundaries that I can draw and shut down, you know, things that are said that I find problematic without like blowing everything up. I think that was kind of what I used to do through my teen years and my early 20s was like everything was a blow up and sometimes I would get really emotional about those conversations and so then I couldn't even like convey you know my viewpoint and also like the facts behind what I'm saying because I would get so worked up so I think for me it's like not shying away from what I believe in setting firm boundaries about what kind of things I will not stand for but also trying to kind of settle myself a little bit and um you know keep the peace in some ways but also there are other relationships where I have had to draw a boundary and just say you know what this is not worth maintaining for me and I will cut you off and I have you know had to cu cut some people out and that is a choice that I made and a choice that I stand by because while there are absolutely things that we can disagree on and have a, a healthy back and forth and debate on there are other things to me and also just like a, a lack of respect that I cannot co-sign and it's hard I feel for anyone having to navigate that I feel like I'm in a pretty good place about it right now. With my family, I, I will never back down from a debate, but also after a, a good solid decade of having fights at the Thanksgiving table, um, I think there's also just been a little bit of shift in what people will say in front of me. And I think that's a good thing because some thoughts should just be inside thoughts. And so if it's just the, the, the eye roll of, oh, what's Sierra gonna say about this that keeps someone from not saying something, that's fine. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe all of this was super vague, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, last question, which is harder, the transition from zero to one or one to two kids? I think for me, the transition from no kids to one kid was significantly harder than going from one to two. Like I'm just so much more sure of myself as a parent. I'm so much more confident in my decisions. I second guess myself so much less. And I also worry a lot less because I'm like, oh, I've been here before. I know what this is like. I know how to handle this situation. Um, and it's just that like confidence of having experienced this before. Everything was so new and intimidating and felt like every little decision carried the weight of the world. And this time, even though, yes, I also have a toddler to take care of, I know what I'm doing. And it's also like less of an adjustment in terms of like, what does your life look like now that you have kids? Like our life had already changed so much and adjusted to what it's like to be parents instead of a married couple with two dogs. Like so much change happened so fast when Grace was born. And this time it's like, oh, we're kind of doing the same things. It's just a little bit harder now 
now and now there's two and I'm sure there are going to be big road bumps that come as we continue on this journey but the adjustment initially pretty easy. So yeah that is it for my Q&A. Thank you to everyone who sent questions. If you want to be part of future Q&As, make sure to follow me on Instagram. And now, now I think I'm going to go lay down. <laughs> I was going to walk on the treadmill again, but I'm just feeling kind of eh, like feel a little bit nauseous, probably just from the Paxlovid. I'm going to have another mint for that reason. I also just feel kind of like brain foggy. Like I don't feel super sick. I just feel kind of out of it. So I'm going to go lay down, maybe try to take a little nap. And I will check in with you guys later. Now I'm watching Inside Out 2. My COVID test is going. Yay! Oh my gosh, it's negative! Yay! It's been 15 minutes now and it is staying negative. So this is great. When I first tested on Wednesday morning, it was like aggressively positive. <laughs> like the test line showed up before the control line even and like super dark. And then I tested yesterday morning and the line was there, but like pretty faint. And now it's fully negative. I'm so glad. I'm gonna test again tomorrow morning just to be really sure and that will also be the five day mark since like the onset so then I should be good to re-enter life be around the kids again and actually since this is negative I'm gonna go downstairs with a mask for a while tonight be able to assist with bedtime and then tomorrow I'll be back in for everything I'm just so glad and so so excited to go see the kids I'm gonna get my mask. All right, I just talked to Steven. I've got a mask on, a handful of mints, and I'm going downstairs. Family! Good morning. It's the next day. Grace and I are making sock puppets. <laughs> yeah, baby. However many eyes you want your sock puppet to have, you can pick them out. They don't have to match. Two. Two for its nose, perfect. There we go. <laughs> They're done! Hi! Hi! Hi. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Daddy. Are Mine. <laughs> My name is Petunia. My name is Petunia. You're, you're also Petunia? What a coinky dink. <laughs> Hi ho, it's home from work we go. Do, 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 do. I am so happy to be back. I'm going to end the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> Eliza, I'm looking for a mind at work, work. Looking for a mind at work, work. <laughs>